Hello, in this series of lecture, we have seen several aspects of the human resource management, the nature of managerial functions, how different schemes have evolved over a period of time. We have also looked at organization and its dimensions in terms of structure, context, processes, and then we have also seen how the field of organization development has emerged to reorganize, refocus, and increase, build performance, effectiveness of the organization. We have also examined the group, group behavior. We have specifically examined the different dimensions of conflict management and creativity and stress. In my last lecture, the uh, we defined the stress. We also looked at how to see the stresses at the individual as well as at the organizational level and also see the stressors and stress both as positive as well as negative. And we did appreciate that some amount of stress is necessary for good performance so that all stresses are not to be seen as bad, all stresses are not to be disliked, but what is important is to manage stress at the organization. So today we will continue our discussion and in this lecture we need to do this uh, following thing. So the end of this session you should have learned and understood the concepts of techniques of managing stress, coping with stress at organizational level and coping with stress at the individual level and also finally we will submit or look at this Lazarus way of dealing stressful circumstances. One can always dip, you know, the define and describe the stress in different ways as we have seen. But to start with, we are talking about stress management means what? It is the ability to maintain control when situations, people and events make excessive demands on the individual. As we said, either we fight or flight in a, as an immediate jerk reaction. So this fighting or flight is running away from the situation as a part of the, no, as a part of the coping. But the question is that we are able to deal with the situation which is creating a lot of pressure on the individual. Sometimes it is the, the people around you where they can create irritation, they shout at you or they may, they may create annoying situations, they may not do what you want them to do, they may exploit you, they may mistrust you or they mismanage the trust you have imposed in them. All these are part of this people management. And then there are events which you yourself have created or the things around you making an excessive demand on your time in terms of your resources, in terms of your capabilities, in terms of uh, what you want versus the what is demanded. There are many of these things. So the typically when you are talking about stress management is, is building that kind of a capacity, building that ability, building that understanding, building that appreciation, building the tools and techniques and practices so that you can analyze the situation, you can understand the situation, you can appreciate it. Similarly around the people that you, you know how to go about it and then cope with this, the different circumstances. One can think of many, several techniques have been proposed for controlling the stress response. The, some have come as a kind of a magic wand solutions. Some have come as a kind of a proven things which people have developed it as a, as a discipline over a, of, over a period of time. So the yoga, meditation, some of these things have proved beyond doubt that, that they are extremely useful in coping with stress and it is positive way of coping with stress. So the question is the most popular technique. You know, First is that can you eliminate the stressor itself? So the elimination part of it 
is the where you change the context. So that means you move away from the hustle and bustle of the urban living. You can reduce the noise from moving your house from a, a street which is so busy if you are located in a road where there is a continuous movement of the vehicle. So you can move away from that place, reduce that kind of a stuff. Right? So noise you can reduce, the, the dust and other things which can come. So you can remove those conditions of living. So similarly eliminate the kind of those stressor is to the change in the workplace itself. So sometimes you may take transfer because you do not like the either the boss or the colleagues, but it may not be the you may it may not guarantee that in the new place you may not uh, you may get the same thing. But uh, the point is that by eliminating it is good, you may taking a choice, you know, chance. So try and eliminate that kind of a stressor. So change of job, change of routines. So some of these things are, are extremely useful. The other is in terms of attempting some kind of a relaxation. So the relaxation techniques are pretty good. That means, you know, from you get some time people are called as a kind of a work rest rhythm. So you define such rhythm so that after a period of time when you are really worked up, so then you take a break, take a walk, take do something else, so do some different tasks. So the, then you know it brings back that kind of an energy level. So relaxation techniques could be that you know that you close your eyes for about two, one or two minutes. So could be depending on the style as we have talked about earlier, each of these coping mechanisms or management of the stress techniques depends on the individual, the situation and the consistency of the situation, the intensity of the situation. So you cannot prescribe one method for all. So the, the point one needs to keep it, one need to always think about the stress management is the principle of individual differences. No two individuals get the same kind of stresses and same situation and things like that. So the, the, so the coping and management principles as well. The third important thing one can think of is the social support system. The social support system is that you do have the good supporting people in the house so your spouse understands the kind of work pressure you have. So when you go back home, so they provide that uh, many opportunities to relax and then so that you can bounce back tomorrow. It is another situation that they can also be irritating, they can also be demanding, they can also create scenes in the house, then you are thrown apart. So that is you have the workplace problem, you also have a problems in your home and then when people try to get into that kind of an avoidance avoidance situation. So the moment they think of both work as well as family situation can create issues for them. So what is important is to have that kind of a required social support. Then also the physical exercises. Physical exercise is an important thing. The doctors have prescribed many of them. So it is a physical fitness and doing routine exercises and then spending time for yourself doing the exercise helps you to reduce the negative aspects of the work pressure, particularly the you know reduces the blood pressure, makes you to physically fit to deal with the situations and keeps you alert. And people have talked about physical exercises are as an important aspect of the stress management. So if you start reflecting on some of these things. It is always easy in some cases to best, you know, the change, the stress is to avoid it. So avoiding is move away from the place, change the job, change the lifestyle. So things like that, but not all stress cannot or cannot be, sometimes you cannot avoid it or one can also say should not be avoided. So it is coming from the so it, when it comes from the family members, so it is that you have to understand, appreciate and work through rather than your you know, elimination is not the solution. 
So people threaten that when I can't face the stress, I will go to Himalayas. Right? You know, the and many, many Swamiji's and philosophers have talked about it. You know, the so it is not that going to Himalaya is going to solve the problem. So what is important is that certain things. It is not that running away from the situation. So you need to be there. You need to be understanding and then deal with those stress situations. So eliminating when you see this, sometimes the stressor can be eliminated psychologically because then you get, that is you get distractions, you invest your time into the more meaningful uh, situations and also you understand what is important in your life. So it is the, the stressors can be eliminated through that kind of a meaningful dialogue and the discussion. So the objective here is to reassess the seriousness of the situation. So elimination of the stressor at the psychological level is you look at the both pros and cons, also the kind of stakes you attach to the particular thing and then when people get to that kind of a stress level, when they are likely to lose loved ones and the teenage, teenagers have this kind of a stress when they are in the, when they are experiencing many physiological changes. So, but some re -underst you know, understanding and some explanations will help people to cope with such stress situations. So, the question is that with the relaxation techniques, you know, the most of the time we are talking about elimination is not possible. But sometimes elimination is doable. That means you know you are changing the the situation or the context, which is causing a repetitive kind of a thing. But sometimes you cannot or you should not, and then you are taking accepting the stress as is. So we are talking about the relaxation techniques. So the several uh, stress management techniques involve some form of physical or mental relaxation. And some of these techniques have been advocated with zeal and enthusiasm of new fads. That means, you know, today it has reached a level of prescription, proven, normative. So it is, it is only that one has to take a, uh, some kind of a guidance and start uh, practicing. Two simple relaxation techniques. You know, one can talk about as a kind of a physiological muscle massage or a kind of a breathing techniques or meditation is also a kind of, you know, the, the relaxing technique. So the one need to see physiological and then going through that kind of a required yogic exercises and then practicing this in a systematic way. The relaxation technique also there are other types major types of relaxation techniques. So autogenic training where this technique uses both visual imagery, imagery and body awareness to move a person into a deep state of relaxation. So people talk about a kind of a hypnotic kind of a level where the suggestions are made that yes, you are relaxing, you feel good about yourself. People go go to that kind of a semi sleep suggestion or situation, and then and then set of suggestions are made. So it is the so this kind of relaxation technique helps, and also the person imagines a kind of a peaceful place, a nice place, and then visualizes that that place, and then focuses on what are the different physical sensations. Imagines to see, move experience and all that. So, they, so for example, one might focus on warmth and heaviness and then you see how what is happening to you and then are you, you are able to breathe and then you are, you are, you are, you are aware of all your experiences. So, as you start imagine, imagining and then move into that situation and feel that place, feel that things around you. So one moves into this one phase to the other and then I, at the end of this you start systematically relaxing. The technique involves slowly 
the tensing and then releasing each of this muscle, each of your body and then and then you are running through and then closely you are becoming calm and quiet. So the, the kinds of these, many of these relaxation techniques, people, you know, particularly, you know, Indian contribution is much, much more here, both at the philosophical level and also through our yoga, the Indian contribution to the management literature is today to develop that kind of a discipline of living, discipline of thinking and discipline of relaxing. And the meditation and the experiences are many. People have combined many of these interventions. And those of you more interested must read about this, uh, the experiences of this Vivekananda Yoga Kendra or many of these yoga centers available in the country. But it is important to see the meditation. Meditation is much more standardized or the typically what people call it as the, the much more systematic ways of doing things. The two most popular forms of meditation include the transcendental meditation. So the students repeat a mantra, so a single word or phrase and also you have the mindfulness meditation. So students focus their attention on the moment by moment thoughts and sensation. So the one is that you focus very clearly and then do that japa or the repetition of the mantra and in a, in a state where you spend that time and also the other side is that you are able to visualize. So this meditation and the relaxation benefits are many and systematically it has been documented it lowers the blood pressure. So it helps person to combat fatigue. That is at the end of the meditation. At the end of the relaxation things, you come back and feel good about it and you are full of energy to do more things. Then it promotes sleep. That means when you go to the bed, you are able to focus your thoughts. You are not too disturbed. Then you are able to sleep well. It also reduces pain. if. People are experiencing this, particularly stress related things and then eases that kind of a muscle tension where you are, you have the body and the mind if you see the mind is able to control your body and that is the, the greatest uh, benefit of this relaxation technique. The other important thing is the social support. We have talked about the social support as it basically refers to an interlocking network of people with whom an individual is able to interact to satisfy important human needs. So that means, you know, if you have a good fellowship group, so at the end of the day that you are meeting all the colleagues in a non-work setting so that you are able to play something, you are able to spend some time. You are able to the discuss things in an informal way. So this is basically what we are talking about, a constructing of the social support. Thing. Also that you are able to meet <coughs> people who respect you. It is also possible within the family so that many strongly get active uh, in the social and social work related things. So the social support brings that kind of a psychological meaning to the individual. So no doubt these work stresses are there, but when they also see that they are useful people, important people, contributing people in the social settings, they are able to deal with some of the work pressures and the work challenges as well. Also you will see the social support brings that so an effective system brings what provides four major types of support behaviors. They are the following. It builds that kind of an emotional support. It gives that instrumental support. It gives the informational support and also the appraisal support. These are, as we see, the emotional support is providing empathy. 
that set of people understand the kind of conditions in your work. They also say, okay, I understand your situation. Don't think that my situation is much, much different. And once you get that kind of a reaction, you feel good about it, you are able to understand your own stress situation. And also you see that people who like you kind of a thing. So the love is an another important thing. Love, caring and trust, when it comes from the your people, maybe in the social clubs, in the community, or in the family, in the relations, outside the work areas, within the organization, all provide this kind of an emotional support. So the emotional support function is an important thing of the social support system. Another is this instrumental support. <coughs> instrumental support is the behaviors that directly help people who are in need. In other words, you do not really create social system to help, but then there are there are occasions where the individuals are called and the people can seek help. So when you are in dire difficulties, you can always look for some help. Help if you have good friends, if you have some good advisors. So that becomes a very useful thing. Another is the information support, providing information to help people cope with their personal problems. So that means, you know, when people have gone through some, when somebody is ill, or somebody is having a problem, then people say, look, I went to this doctor, or so-and-so place provides you this help. They talk about, okay, I think you have tried allopathy, try this alternative medicine, Ayurvedic medicine would be more useful to you. So people talk about these kinds of, provide that kind of an information. <coughs> and then, so then you get that kind of an idea about how to deal with or how to cope with that kind of a situation. And that is where the social support systems do play a significant role. Then you also have this appraisal support. Appraisal support comes from this providing specific evaluative information. Evaluative information to help individuals with their self-evaluation. I think, you know, you are reacting too much. I think, yes, everybody goes through this. But what is that so significant that you think that so-and-so is very important? So in other words, when you pose your problem in your social setting, so the people do come up with this kind of statements. And such statements help you to see what is that could be done, why are you focusing so much. So that gives you specific evaluative information. Evaluative information is enabling where the individual gets that required insight. You require that kind of a comfort to work with. Then, the apart from these things, when you see this management of stress, the very clearly the we have made this statement: the stress is inevitable in human life. So that means you we have to focus really on functional coping, effective coping strategies, effective coping strategies at the organizational level, as well as at the employee level or at the individual level. And uh, in the following things, we will quickly look at how that organizations can design and deliver various things so that they can enable this management of stress, effective management of stress. Also, we will also look at the employee level, what is that could be done. So if you see this, the coping strategies management of stress at the organizational level, <coughs> one of the things the management should do is to create awareness programs and also the practice sessions about the stress reduction and the relaxation techniques, what we talked about earlier. Music, yoga, strong hobbies, all these things can help individual to cope with stress. So the stress reduction programs aim at identifying relevant organizational stressors. And when we are looking at the kind of stressors what we talked about earlier, so the 
the stress reduction programs focuses on helping people to see yes some of these stress are inevitable but now can you change your lifestyle can you prepare yourself so can you have a positive mindset can you be more optimistic so these things are possible through good stress management programs and the creating that kind of an awareness creating that kind of an acceptance and then building that understanding and attitudes about yes stress could be useful stress could be meaningful and then recognizing the dysfunctional consequences always could be brought through good stress management programs the other important thing is to reduce the stress effects by redesigning jobs now some jobs become very repetitive some jobs are highly monotonous some jobs create stress the stress of an order because it is so critical to the organization some jobs are very hazardous so the you know then it is like when people have to uh, deal with particularly in the ports where you know one of the examples that the police officers the custom officer have to deal with drug peddlers so in a port that is maybe in a seaport or the airport and then you know the life becomes or the job becomes very hazardous so the life itself is under threat so then you know people are trained people are uh, people are empowered and people wear that kind of a bulletproof jackets and then also get their bulletproof vehicles they are supported with many technologies so in other words the stress prone situations but organizational programs explain and the redesigning of the job see that you do certain things remotely so you do get on a priori information you do get many things classified before and also reallocating workloads when the full concentration is required on the job continuously you have to be aware and alert the threat can come at any, any point of time so then shorter work periods so they change the task once in 3 hours once in 4 hours rather than having a long hours of work where oh, after some period of time you may lose your alertness and you may you may forget and you may become less agile so all these are possible and also the improving supervisory skills so the redesigning the jobs reallocating workloads improving the supervisory skills where people listen to the problem people respond to the individual requirements people are much more empathetic and they try and care for so all these are part of the the training of the the managers and the people in the responsibility so that they can they can be more proactive much more enabling much more positive in the work relationships the coping stress at the organizational level what we talk about the stress management schemes usually focusing on the training individual employees and you know and sometimes the work groups to manage the stress symptoms in a more effective manner so that means you know you try and see how is that that they can do so the employees uh, try and open up about their own uh, work styles they also understand all the kind of stresses which are coming in the workplace manage their interdependencies manage all this in terms of in a positive way than making it as a kind of a crisis management so the effective manner means it is planned systematic where people don't have to raise their voice create that kind of a stress reactions which can come around work pressures as we seen the job redesign jobs may be definitely a source of stress to many individuals <coughs> so the properly designed jobs and the work schedules if you see can help e stress to the individual also to the organization so what is this properly designed jobs would mean the properly designed jobs would talk about a 
that it is matching with the skills of the employee. It is matching with the background and the training of the employee. That is what we talked about the right man for the right job. I think this is an important step. Second is that not too many jobs, unrelated jobs are loaded where the individual finds it very difficult to move from one task to the other or the end of the day there are many unfinished tasks. So, most of the unfinished tasks will become a stress point what people call it as the long arm of the job. So, the long arm of the job where the schedules at the end of the day you see there are too many unfinished things it gets on to the nerves of the people. Similarly, there are tasks which are not enabled through the proper technology. The banking system used to experience this because they used to do most of the things manually and when they were the things were not getting tallied. So, the managers have to stay not only the evening hours up to late night and they have to do the balancing. So, they unless all the accounts are properly done they cannot leave and some situation the whole uh, the all the employees in the you know, bank had to stay and then make sure that everything has been cleared. So, such things have uh, been overcome through the introduction or the induction of technology. So, the technologies have helped because now we have made the jobs much more interfaced with the computers and then so, the end of the day the 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 tasks are completed and maybe one only need to overview, oversee the situations. So, the properly designed jobs and the work schedules which are enabled through appropriate technology can reduce the stress substantially. Otherwise, manual working and then errors, error prone kind of a situation can always bring that kind of a stress on the individual. So, the job rede redesigning has to take care of this, what are the kind of the repetitive tasks, what are the tasks which are totally unrelated and demanding time and then one has to see how much one ha the kind of errors which can come in a job and then the, the kind of stress can get created because of the kind of responsibilities what people have. So, the responsibilities of this cash or handling that big money or doing some very critical things to the organization in terms of handling security, these are all the things can pose <coughs> and build pressure and the giving that kind of an appropriate break, giving that kind of a required uh, relaxation can help reducing that stress. I think that is where the job redesign plays an important role. Then one can also think of the collateral programs. So, that means an organization program specifically created or created to help employees deal with stress. So, you know that for example, maternity kind of a situation. So, the organization thinks yes, when needy employees having this then what they do is that they give a maternity leave, but then they also give a paternity leave. So, also that is in terms of that where you can go and help the help the family members. Crash is an another thing where you can bring children and uh, you know the particularly for the working mothers. So, working mothers leaving their kids in the house uh, until this day you know they, they become a four or five age where they can go to that kind of a preschool or a nursery school. So, the mothers can bring their kids to the work areas. So, that there is a special arrangement has been made in crash, they can leave the kids. I think that is another uh, method of the of reducing the employee stress. And also the, the collateral programs can take care of that. Today you can do that some of the routine things what people have to do of payment of various bills, the banking related things. So, you create a small workplace facilities where they can complete their banking or payment of the bills with respect to the electricity, energy, water, uh, telephone. So, many of these things. So, if these things can be handled around or in the workplace to that extent the you know the 
if the stress can come down. So the point is, look at the kind of stresses, look at the kind of thing what employees are going through and build that kind of a collateral program. And the collateral programs is an organizationally initiated activity, but focusing on the individuals to reduce. Now today, the transport, transport, canteen, and these are all the called as welfare measures. The more the welfare measures, I think typically it, it makes the life of the employees much more, much more comfortable. So the collateral programs are an important initiative of the organization, helping people to reduce their stress. So the, the coping strategies at the organizational level also could be the stress management programs of what we talked about, introducing yoga in the workplace, doing prayers at the start of the day. So there are some organizations I know that employees come together and then uh, hold their hands and do uh, two minutes prayer. So that prayer builds that what we call it as the positive feeling. So positive living kind of a principle. So people start seeing the other person as important, valuable. <coughs> they pray for the organization. So the stress management program could be that the, it is also in terms of helping people to do this meditation, yoga, the relaxation things. And also you can, can do this health promotion programs, the health and fitness kind of a thing where if you visit uh, some of the best of the IT companies, today they have a big gymnasium in the workplace. So there are areas where people can do the workouts. So that means after the work hours, then you can walk in and do that physical exercises. So health promotion programs, you also check people, you know, they check for the blood pressure, the tension and the stress experienced by anyone. So that can also be do what is known as a kind of a preventive maintenance. So health promotion programs, you do the periodic checking annually and look at the, and I just suggest people about the kind of nutrition the kind of uh, food habits they have to develop and promote and and also making sure that the, they are fit and contributing. The third important uh, thing also what we can think of this coping strategies is to build <coughs> good career development programs. As you know, career and career management always build stress in the individual. When people think that they are not able to do what they want or sometimes they, they are doing something which basically they are not that type. For example, highly emotional, highly introverted people are placed in some of the marketing functions. They find it very awkward, they find it very difficult to cope with that kind of a task demand. So career analysis in terms of their strengths and weaknesses in terms of the opportunities available in the organization, helping people to see what is that they really want. Do they want growth? Do they want more money? Do they want satisfying things to do? So what satisfies them? These things can be explored in a good uh, career development program. <coughs> career development programs build that kind of a required confidence and also build that kind of a dialogue between the boss and the subordinates. And also giving clear picture about what the organization opportunities are, what capacities are required, what capabilities are required. So giving such clear and detailed information helps people to build their own op you know, opportunity matrix and then they can see what is that need to be done. So focusing on their self-development, focusing on giving meaningful and manageable experiences to the individual, again, makes people to be more comfortable in the organization. As we are seeing that the organizational level intervention also can be counseling. Counseling, as you know, is a kind of a discussion, discussion of a problem 
with an employee. So that means we are talking about employees with problem, not problem employee. So the so there is no problem employee. Always you have employees with problems. So you have to help them so that they can cope with the problems in a better fashion. So helping the employees to help themselves. <coughs> I think that's the thought. So in a counseling experience, what you do is uh, is to expose them about the various opportunities before them. You have that kind of a dialogue and you also make them to see what are the alternatives available for them. So it is a discussion of a problem. So the problem and problem dimensions are explored and the individuals can be helped through a directive counseling or a non-directive counseling. In a directive counseling, you give them specific direction, specific alternatives and build that kind of a contract. But in a non-directive counseling, you have a dialogue but the individual initiates the thoughts, individual builds the alternatives and also chooses the alternative and gets committed about what one should do. So the question is that the counseling sessions can be handled about how the individual perceives own career, how an individual thinks about the performance, that could be the performance counseling. Sometimes people have stress because of the family, so it is called the marriage counseling if they have uh, marital problems. Sometimes you they have uh, a difficulty in coping with particular category of employees with gender, coping with the opposite gender. So then sometimes the counseling helps. People can correct some of their priorities and the behaviors and the family counseling community counseling, these are all the emerging fields of the organization where trying to help the employees to cope with their stress situations. So it basically improves employees mental health and by the release of their pent up emotions. So what people talk about this catharsis. Catharsis is a process of bringing about those pent up feelings and particularly pent up emotional feelings. And when the catharsis is typically you can see when people experience the death in the family or where they don't cry, when the crying becomes an important useful experience. So people around make the individual to cry and when somebody cries after some time he or she becomes a kind of a clean slate. So the catharsis has that kind of an advantage of making the person to come out of all that hidden things and so that it, he becomes a clean slate. So the catharsis is nothing but taking out those, those feelings and particularly the emotions. So the counseling can help sometime to release some of their pent up emotions. Organizational level, very clearly we have seen, also talk about the kind of a meditation. <coughs> meditation, as we mentioned, it's a way to reduce stress. It also brings together all the energies of the mind and focuses them on a chosen point so that they can work through their difficulties. So it is involves a quiet, concerned inner thought are the you know the in order to rest the body both physically and emotionally so it helps remove a person from a, a stressful world temporarily it is not running away but to come back with more energy to deal with the situation we already mentioned that relaxation so it is a coping with stress requires that adaptation so proper work rest rhythm proper relaxation is an effective way to cope with. So it could take many methods. It, somebody can take a vacation. Somebody can take a break. Somebody can go and play for some time and come back. 
So, these things are very important by the individuals. So, the coping strategies at the individual levels is that you must see what gives you relaxation. Some people have suggested that you see people with uh, who are not privileged. <coughs> Somebody suggested you go and visit a hospital. When you are stressed up, you see the problems of many others. So, then you see that how blessed you are. And then you also see that can I help them? So, when you, are when you think that you want to help others, that you become more resourceful. So, feeling resourceful is an important thing where you are feeling good about yourself. So, the, so building that kind of a relaxation technique of what excites you, what gives you that kind of a change is one, one thing one need, you know, individuals have to think and build that. The other important thing is the time management. And howsoever one may think, unless somebody manages time well, the one cannot deal with the stress. As there are too many tasks to be completed, too many responsibilities are there in the organization, and people are driving around the success. People are futuristic where they want to do more with less. I think that's where really they are they are doing too many things. It appears for many people that all the time people are running. But then if they are good in their time management, they can achieve more and more or better things. So time management is often recommended for managing stress. In other words, if you do not plan well, if you do not allocate the time to for whatever you want, then all the time you are compromising. And most of the time you compromise on what is that you want and what is so critical for your success. So, it is in that sense that the daily pressure can be can be eased if a person does a better job of managing time. There are many principles of time management, but some of the things are extremely important. One of the things is to make a list. Make a list of things what must be done, what should be done and what would you like to do. So, in this kind of a thing, right, so what is really a see, what is that you would like to do, what is that you want to do, what is that shall be completed. So, if you moment you make this kind of a categories of things, it helps you to focus on what is first and what is last. But many of things people do something what appears to be very easy and a lot of time is wasted, then you do not have a time to do more things. And also cut out on time wasting. So, there are many situations which demands takes away your critical time. So, you must see what are those time wasters. Sometimes you have to wait for people. Some, so, that means making a proper appointment would be a useful thing. Or you can also see sometimes you what you are doing is that somebody else can handle your task. So, see what is that can be delegated to the others. Something you have to see that whether some pre-screening could be done. Otherwise, you would be spending a lot of time. Can you get a very summary kind of an information? So, the many of the times you are wasting energy on reading unnecessary stuff. So, if somebody can work out for you that summary and then you can reading through that summary, if you can come to the some conclusion, that is good. So, cut out this kind of a time wasters is another suggestion. So, you must also learn to drop unimportant activities. So, you must see what is not very critical. So, what is that you think that where you are not going to get any value in terms of your own time. So, you must see that you may, it may be attractive. It may be attractive to go and spend your time, but you must also see whether it is relevant to you. Do you, whatever the concerns you have, Will it add some kind of a solutions to that? So, that is where the two things people have talked about. So, you must know how to, how to say no. So, what are those activities where you need not do it? And then the second important principle is to delegate. So, when others can do it, when others can do it better way, so that if you think that involving them is good, so try and delegate. Otherwise, you accumulate the work 
you accumulate the task and then also become ineffective. So the so it's it, these two are important skills for the individual to develop, and also the role management. So the role management is to see this. You have to work out very clearly to avoid this role overload. So that is where you have to see where is that you want to say no, and also you must see the role ambiguities. When people talk about different things, you must demand a kind of a contract. Put down the thoughts in writing, have a kind of a role negotiation, and then very clearly identified steps and tasks. So you have to make that kind of a, an opportunity for yourself. And also you must know how to deal with role conflicts. When your own priorities are not matching with the role performance and the demands of the situation, you must clearly state your values of what you stand for. And if you, it is required, you must be able to quit that place as well. So the value conflicts are difficult to resolve. One should not have stress because you are not able to cope with it. So you must see and articulate that what is that you can do or what is that you cannot compromise. But the conflicting expectations when it comes, you must know in a way how to confront it, how to sort it out rather than live with the problem and not able to run, not able to avoid, not able to attack, I think that will give uh, that kind of a stress experience. So you must have that kind of a healthy attitude of creating that confrontation and dealing with it. And as we said that look for friends, look for good friends, look for family members with whom you can share your feelings, share your feelings comfortably and then help, take their help to reintegrate yourself and supportive family and friends always, always they are useful to cope with routine times of stress and an ongoing basis. I think that is where there are people need to be fortunate to have good family members and the friends who are helping you day in and day out to understand your problems in the workplace and similarly good colleagues who will help you to overcome social and economic crisis you are likely to face. That is how the organization is seen as an extended family. And that is where the people experience less stress and then have more enjoyment in the life. But when these things are separated, when other things are also conflicting, then the stress levels are very high for the individual. So let's look at it. The last part of this lecture is what is the Lazarus way of dealing with stressful circumstances? He described several methods of dealing with various stressful circumstances. One, he talked about uh, getting into a kind of a comfortable position and saying to oneself calming phrases such as, you know, feeling warm and relaxed, I am totally at peace, utterly calm. So that is, you have that kind of a self-talk, self-dialogue, say then, and then thinking about yourself into the situation. Another is use of contrary questioning to undo worrying about consequences of inadequacy. You know, many a times we become anxiety prone when we are ex ex experiencing stress. So that means whenever tempted to ask, you know, the oneself, what if? So what's going to happen? Nothing. You know, world is not going to end. So simplify and uh, precede the statement with, so what if? So what is the worst thing that could happen if? So these are all the kinds of things will help you to reduce and make you to think yes. And then countering that anxious, even low mood moments by projecting ahead in time. So then look at that kind of a thing to the future. For example, when you are feeling in the midst of worry sometimes, imagine ahead to your time and one might be in a better place, engaging in more enjoyable behaviors. So restfully enjoying music, basking in a change of season. Oh, summer, yes, but summer is going to end. So there is a new skill or activity, new acquaintances, more pleasant places and so on so that you are able to project into the future, so come on, I'm going to enjoy this, and then I'm, you know, such, making such statements. So when we do this gradually projecting first a 
week, uh, then to two weeks, a month and three months, etc. So then you are projecting and making it to a kind of a where you are trying to reinterpret the situation and then coping your own self moods to tune with and then seeing more positive opportunities in the life than seeing everything as bleak and monotonous and so the so you can reflect on the, the future time to give yourself the perspective that now is not forever. So I think that's the model of Lazarus of what he was talking about to the future. So that means use of thought control, a technique for vigorously bossing one's adverse or troublesome thoughts. And then you know you are able to deal with things which are not so comfortable around. And the so it involves a very clearly a vehement, assertive interruption of a negatively think thoughts pattern by shouting out loud or silently to oneself words like stop or no in the middle of a very anxious series of worrying. So the Lazarus way of doing is to very clearly question. So this approach does not work but requires a repetition over approximately a month's time. Somebody has to practice this. Like I said earlier, there are many, many techniques, many opportunities, but one need to understand stress, see what techniques works for you, but there is no one technique applicable to all levels, all situations, all contexts. Certain things will work, but people have worked uh, very extensively. So whatever I have covered is only some examples. So we have seen the following things, techniques of managing stress, coping with stress at organizational level, coping with stress at the individual level, and also one of the models of dealing in the stressful circumstances. So as we go along, one can develop, one can integrate more of these, but what is most important is to see that stress as an important part of the work life and then build that capacity to work with the stress and stress situations.